My name is Steve Yoder. I'll be taking you through the revitalization of New Orleans Square and the growth of South BA. I work for the City of Broken Arrow. I'm in the Tourism and Economic Development team. And so we've had the privilege and honor of uh, watching New Orleans Square uh, grow and then fall and then grow again. So it's, uh, it's been, a, been a fun little, um, fun little project. So the uh, uh, thing you might want to know about me, New Orleans Square is my priority. It's, it's what I have been assigned to do um, since uh, roughly 2021. So uh, three, to, three to three and a half, four years roughly. I've been with the city about five years, five years in April. And so uh, they decided that once the revitalization project started that they would put me in, in charge of uh, just with the merchants. I'm not in charge of the, the construction. Uh, none of that. It's just, just handling the merchants there. And so um, my title is Business Retention and Expansion. And those two words, business retention, will tell you that, that uh, that's kind of why I'm there, to help retain business in Norton Square. So I'll walk you through this. This is going to be um, the first thing you want to go through is just a quick history of New Orleans Square. And I'll, I'll uh, try to be brief, but I also want to be uh, inclusive of, of everything that you might want to know. As you may or may not know, whoops, where are we? There we go. So New Orleans and Elm used to be, it was the intersection, right? It was the intersection, it was the place to be. It had all the, uh, the grocery, the retail, et cetera. And this was, this was back in the 80s and the 90s. Um, there was Reesers, Hobby Lobby, Skaggs, Kmart, uh, amongst a, a lot of others were out there as well. They were major retailers, Class A, um, Class A retailers. And so, uh, you know, you look at that and you go, wow, that was, that was, that was it, right? Um, the highest um, traffic counts of any intersection in Broken Air were right there. And then something happened. And then 2005 happened and, and Bass Pro. So Bass Pro was, was arranged. There was an agreement with Bass Pro there on the right. Yep, good. Um, and that was roughly 2005 area, 2005 to 2007, 2008, before it was built. And then all the traffic started migrating that way. By traffic, I mean business traffic. Um, you have, a, you have a, an outstanding place like Bass Pro, and then you're going to want uh, you're going to want to be around that area. If you're a retailer, if you're a, a, a restaurant, a retailer, a, a whatever, you want to, you're going to want to be in that neighborhood. And if you go by there, if you drive by there, you'll see that. And that's exactly what happened. And so you have, I don't know, uh, you name it. There's hotels. There's uh, obviously we're in one of the, the fine hotels that are around this area. So 2005 was when things started happening. It was a slow, slow, slow uh, decline. Right, and so it didn't happen overnight, but uh, you'll notice Kmart was, was gone in 2004. Others started leaving 2006, 2008, 2010. Uh, some of the bigger names I put on here was the Hobby Lobby, uh, El Chico, and Reesers. And I think Reesers was, um, to be honest, the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, when, we, when Reesers left, uh, that was when uh, the council finally you know, said, you know what, enough's enough. I think, I think we have to do something about this. And so um, that's when some change started happening. So at that time in, uh, in that 2000, oh, I'm gonna say 2016 neighborhood, uh, occupancy rate was pretty low. The occupancy rate in Northern Square was, was really below 50%. When I started coming here and, and taking, um, uh, taking inventory of what's out there, it was 53%. So that means almost half. Uh, you know, you have uh, 108 possibilities out there. We only had 57 or 58 that were out there. So it was, it was, um, it was dismal, you know, to say the least. So that was, that was um, you know, again, roughly 2019. Um, council, the city leaders all said, you know what, it's time for change. And so, uh, that's when we're gonna, we're gonna, you see tactical urbanism up here. We're gonna pause there for a second. We're gonna, gonna go to the next slide. And we're gonna come back to what tactical urbanism means because uh, if you're like me, I had to Google what it meant to even know what it meant. So um, I didn't know what that meant when I first started. What is tactical urbanism? Well, I'll, we'll show you here in just a second. 
but so it was time for change and so um, the, the plan was, was basically pretty simple. In 2017, there was a report done by a group uh, called the Catalyst Group. They came in, they do this for a living, they look at uh, blighted areas and areas that need, that need improvement and they, uh, they basically just say, here's our recommendation for what you could do here. And that's exactly what happened. So council in their, in their wisdom and city leaders said, let's get a report. And so there was a report done uh, 2017. In um, 2019, <clears throat> there were some committees established. And the committee name was, anybody know the committee name? Anybody want to guess? It's not New Orleans Square. It was called Elm Place and New Orleans Advisory Committee, the EPINAC, if, you, if, you, if you're into, uh, into those words. So Elm Place and New Orleans Advisory Committee, there was about 12 people on that committee. They did a fantastic job of looking at that report that was done by the, uh, by the Catalyst Group and saying, okay, do we want to implement this? What do we want to do out of this? And so um, what was decided was, yeah, I think we need some, some change here. The, the intersection needs, needs redone. How are we going to do that? Do we want to do it with a, um, with a roundabout was discussed, uh, totally redoing the, the intersection was discussed, uh, leaving it the same was discussed, and what was determined was we would do a road diet. And so they kind of trimmed things down a little bit, just by what the word diet um, symbolizes. So they trimmed down the, the intersection a little bit so that people would slow down and look each way at the retailers. Who's out here? The way it was, um, you, could, you could buzz through that intersection at around 50 miles an hour and not even look. You didn't even have to know who was to your left or who was to your right. So now we kind of trim that down. That's by design. Uh, and I think they've done a wonderful job with that. However, let's go back now. This is about the time when we started doing tactical urbanism. Anybody know what tactical urbanism means? I did not. And I'll, I'll fess up right now. Um, tactical urbanism, if you have a, a, a dictionary, if you want to look it up, it's an approach to neighborhood building using short-term, low-cost, scalable activities to catalyze long-term change. Okay, what's that mean? You know, so you have to look at some of those words. It's basically little things like this. So, how many of you remember the, the paint in the intersection? Do you remember that? Yeah. You paint the intersection. How many of you uh, bashed us for that? You know, you, you had every right to. Paint an intersection? Oh, that's great, city. Way to go. You're just, you're wasting money. It's a waste of time. Well, all that was done for was to just get a little bit of attention to the, to the intersection. We also put a pink, a uh, pink, a uh, purple and green piano out there at the intersection. Same thing. All that was done, that was a you know, we didn't go buy a really nice piano. That was a piano we had in stock, and we're like, what do we do with this piano? It's, it doesn't work. So we just put it out there for just kind of some, some fun, uh, and that's called tactical urbanism. Little pop-ups, little pop-up events that might take place. Uh, you'll see some events that we did a little later on called the, uh, the fitness event. What was that called? The, um, well, I forget the name of it, but it was a fitness event, right? I'll get there in just a second. The Get Fit Festival, yeah, that's what it was called. And that was just a little pop-up, uh, real quick, two-hour event that we had, again, just to get people to look, look around and go, oh, that's what's going on in New Orleans Square. So, let's go back to our plan of action. In 2021, the City Council approved the intersection construction, right? So they said, yep, let's do this. And again, the road diet was the, was the um, the method of choice. In 2022, construction started, and that's when my life got interesting. So, as I mentioned, my role is to keep the merchants happy. And as you can imagine, when uh, construction is going on and, and that's your livelihood, uh, it, it, things got rough. And that's okay. We, we understood that. Uh, the, the underlying theme was, you know, a little bit of pain now and you're going to really love it later. And, and it, is, it is held true. I didn't know if I was 100% convicted with that, but, but I, was, I was certainly certainly telling everyone that, just hang with us, it's going, to be, it's going to be rough for a while, but man, you're going to love it when it's done. And every merchant today says the same thing. They're like, yeah, you, you know, we're, we're glad that it, it's happened and we've, uh, we've reaped the benefits from it. So um, a little bit of pain is, is sometimes fun. 
So the orange cone period, uh, 10 months is what it took, uh, which is actually extremely good. If you're, if you're not in the construction world, uh, not in the development world, you know that um, 10 months might seem like a long time, but if you are, man, that, that's record time. And so they, they did a fantastic job dealing with uh, spring break, um, you know, summer. We even had a, an event during the construction period. We had block party out there. Torn up streets all over the place, but we still had the block party out there and had about 22 to 25,000 people attend that event. So it was, um, it was, uh, <laughs> it was crazy, but you know, it all works. Craziest part was we still had events. There's our Get Fit Festival that I had trouble remembering what the words were, but there's the Get Fit Festival. We had a post-party Mardi Gras festival, the holiday arts and crafts, hops, bops, and bites, and um, we haven't had all these every single year, but um, the Get Fit Festival was a, a one year, one and done, uh, because we had it in the spring and, and it's cold in the spring. So we decided we wouldn't do that any longer. Uh, the Mardi Gras event, the Mardi Gras Festival, again, same thing, it's a, it's a February, March event, and um, weather also has some impact with those. However, Hops and Bops is a fall um, project or fall uh, event. We've had it since 2021, so we've had it three years running. Uh, we'll have it again this year. And then, of course, our, our uh, prize event is the Block Party. The block party has been going on since uh, 21 as well. So we've had it 21, 22, 23, and this year will be bigger and better than ever. Um, you're gonna be shocked at what's going on there. We're gonna try to have it, uh, again, we try to get it bigger and better each and every year. That's where you have fireworks. Um, last year, um, these figures are, uh, are not official, but we had over 30,000 people at this event. And so, with 30,000 people, the merchants, again, remember my, my role as, as the business retention guy is keep them happy. Well, they're extremely happy. When they have 30,000 people coming in and, and finding out that they've got a business out there and they didn't know that they had, and wow, I didn't know that I could get my, my dog washed over here at Sloppy Dog Wash, or didn't even know I could get insurance, or I didn't know I could, I, I didn't know there was a, a, a sushi place out here. Right, so those, that's exactly why we do this. We do this to get um, you know, exposure for the, for the merchants and also for the people of Broken Arrow, obviously. So the block party's kind of kind of taken a life of its own. It's, it's, um, I think if we, if we stopped doing the block party, um, myself and, and many of the city leaders, we'd be hung up by our toes, you know, we'd be hung up at, at, in, uh, and asked to leave town. So we're gonna keep, keep doing it until, um, you know, until we're not here anymore, probably. So that, again, look forward to that. That's gonna be happening on, on June the 28th and 29th this year. Yep, 28th and 29th, two days. And so that's the plan. Um, we're making, making plans right now to have music on both nights, fireworks on both nights. Um, obviously that's subject to change, but uh, just, just keep your eyes open for that. That'll be a fantastic party. All right, so because of all that, what happens to occupancy? So we go from 52% or what was it, 53% to 92%. Because there's activity, because there's um, attention being paid to the, to the intersection, look what happens. Businesses start saying, hey, I want to be a part of that. And that's exactly what happened. And so the, the brilliance of the, the council and the city leaders were, were um, it's just, just brilliant. I, I, I again, I, uh, there's always some skepticism. You're like, well, okay, I think this might be a 70-30 or this might be a 50-50 or whatever, but um, it, it certainly worked and it worked, worked like a charm. And so these are just some of the, the bigger, uh, newer um, businesses that you see here. Crunch Fitness, Handmade by Amber, uh, the Triumph Gym, Go, Show, Go Jack of All Shows, Study Hub, etc. You can read there, you can see what, what's on the wall. Uh, there's others out there. These are some of our, our new, new additions. And you know, th there's always, always um, people coming and people going. And I was just talking with someone and, and they said, was well, it 93%? And I said, well, this morning it might be 91% because we lost um, a uh, uh, McWilliams Media and Action Plan, or uh, yeah, Action Plan. They went to, they've had, they bought a building and they went 
they moved, they stayed within Broken Air, but they bought a building in Broken Air and they moved there. And so, you know, good for them. We appreciate, we appreciate what they did and at least they're staying in Broken Arrow. So we've done our job and um, we're glad that they, they found a place. All right, so what happens next is residential. Housing starts in South BA are, are booming. Um, so when people come, that's density. And density is crucial for retail development. So that's, that's always great news. Then we look at, um, okay, what else is happening? Well, that development, that density, it fuels all the next developments going, ha going on. Aspen Ridge, y'all heard about Aspen Ridge, I'm sure. That's the new research. Um, that's going in, the, the walls are up, things are happening out there, there's a come and go at Chipotle and uh, I think a, a, a Chick-fil-A, uh, all, all those have been announced. There's others that haven't been announced uh, near the Warren Theater, um, but even, even there, there's, there's some businesses coming. And so density clearly fuels that further development. Um, th then there's the recent uh, more capital announcement, that's the 14 acres, that's across the street if you were to look at this, it would be over here probably, right? Yeah, so it'd be, be across the street from, uh, from the, the Aspen Ridge development. And there's a possibility of a, I mean, you can't quote us on this, but uh, possibly a hotel over there with some other retail going on. And so uh, wonderful things happening in South BA. One more item, this is, um, You've heard of the Innovation District. If you haven't, it's, a, it's over kind of by, let's see, it's, it's north of the Creek, Turnpike, east of Olive, kind of south of Florence, kind of 111th and, and uh, Olive area. Uh, 90 acres there where we're trying to get that developed into, uh, as you can see here, trying to make it really two things. If you boil this, this slide down to two, two words, it would be jobs and talent attraction. When it increased jobs, increase, in, in, attract all the talent there. Once that happens, or if that happens, um, you know, you'll see a lot of manufacturers go in there, you'll see um, a lot of jobs being created, and that's, that's the purpose for, for that, those 90 acres. And then one other thing in South Bria, it's, it's a small thing, it's not, you know, hadn't gotten much attention lately, but, you know, the amphitheater. The amphitheater's, um, you know, probably the biggest game changer we'll have in this city since Bass Pro. In, in my humble opinion. So this is, this is a, an amazing creation, 12,500 uh, seat arena that will be, um, uh, again, 40 to 60 events happening each year. Um, big names, pretty good names. I don't, um, I'm sorry, but I don't think Travis and, Ke and, uh, and uh, what's his girlfriend's name? Taylor, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I don't think Travis and Taylor are gonna be there, but um, we'll have some big names going on there. So that is South BA, the history of South BA. This is our team. Um, four out of the five people on this screen work pretty hard. One of them doesn't work very hard, but the rest of them do. And then this is time for your questions or answer. Questions and any comments you might have. Yes, ma'am. Power lines? You know, that's a great, great question. And uh, ironically, our city manager is sitting in the back here. Mr. Spurgeon, would you like to say a few words about that? Mr. Spurgeon's really shy. He doesn't like to talk much, but. Uh, I knew a cat asked that question. <laughs> well, actually, there's about, there's about six million reasons why it wasn't done at that time. Actually, six, about four to six million dollars to be exact. That makes sense. And so I will just say this is that we just renewed the PSO franchise agreement last year, the voters approved. As a part of the agreement, they did agree to, to cost participate in relocating the lines. And so the, the uh, committee is going to be reestablished later this year to, uh, to discuss the relocation. We won't be able to take everything underground because it's just not affordable. But I do think in the next few years we'll be able to actually take some of those lines that really make take away from the aesthetics and actually move them back behind the buildings to make it look much better. But it really comes down to, to, to dollars and cents. You know, and we barely had enough money to finish the intersection improvements. 
we got some bond money and then we used uh, some other savings that we had for some other projects and was able to get it done. Great, that's a great question. But it's coming. We're going to start discussion later this year. Very cool. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. You're exactly right. Um, so the partnership with Notes Live, the amphitheater itself, their building is 12,500 capacity. They're going to spend about $72 million. And that will be for the, uh, for the actual amphitheater itself. The city's going to spend, I would say, anywhere from, I would say, 24 to $28 million, which is going to include, we're going to have to completely re reconfigure the opening to the events park. We're going to have to widen some streets on New Orleans as you get on to the to the uh, the turnpike. We're actually have a meeting on the 29th of this month with the Turnpike Authority about actually creating access from the road inside the park to where you could get on to the turnpike. And we're also going to be building a brand new road that's going to be east of Rosewood that runs from Gary Street that will run all the way up, uh, well, I would say, to the northeast and connect with Washington. And ODOT, right now, uh, they're letting a contract to actually, if you know where Zico's at, that intersection where Zico's at, it doesn't align on 51. It looks like this. Well, in about a year or so from now, it's going to be all lined up. There's going to be a traffic signal there. So what's going to happen is, is that we will build a road, and then what we'll do is, that'll be a three-lane road. So during concerts, you'll have two roads coming in and one road going out for public safety. Then we'll flip it. When, when we leave to where you'll have two going out and one coming in for public safety. And so we're going to have to spend um, uh, basically, plus that's some parking, we're going to probably build about 3,000 parking spaces. But in order for Notes Live to come here, one of the things they said was we had to reconfigure everything to get the traffic out, all 12,000 if it's capacity, within 45 minutes to an hour. So in order to do that, we have to go in and make all these improvements. And, so otherwise, my philosophy is this. We've all been to concerts where we're sitting there for two hours after it's over. And then it makes you really not want to go back unless it's, you're, just, you're just dead set on seeing that artist. Well, council said if we're going to do this, we're going to make it a positive experience that people are going to want to come back to actually uh, another concert because it's easy to get in and get out. Well, there's a cost. You can either do it with traffic management, having the police and, and the fire and other people moving traffic, but if, if you bottleneck and you don't make improvements to the, to the road system, it doesn't matter how good a traffic manager you are. So we're going to make that investment. The good thing is there's no new taxes, no property taxes. It's going to be a TIF. And based on the sale of tickets and concessions, it'll easily pay for the debt service, the money we have to borrow. People in my neighborhood also have questions about um, it's an open air amphitheater, right? But there are some covers over portions of it. Yes. Uh, what we're seeing on the graphics. Most of it. And most of it. And then what sort of seating is provided? Uh, there's actually going to be a covered seating up front, and then there's going to be the suites area. There's going to be a general area for seating, and then there's going to be what they call these fire pit suites, because the owner of the venue actually wants the, the, uh, these fire pit suites to look like out, out somebody's back, backyard to where you're looking where you've got a nice chairs and tables and then there is going to be some grassy area that's seated to where you're able to be able to bring in the chairs are going to rent that will allow you to sit there and then and, and get have a just have a great view so some of the seats are permanent all weather yes. seats is yes permanent all weather seats yes installed yes okay. part of it's you know because of the weather and how hot it gets obviously in july and august a little bit of september they're adding cover to it but they're also doing some very cool things that are actually going to reduce the temperature by 10 to 12 degrees uh, during the actual concerts themselves. Uh, the latest technology, they've got these little, these little stones that they can bring out that they put on the ground that actually reduce the temperature. I mean, they've, this, is, this is going to be really, really cool because we've had a lot of people say, nobody's going to want to come see a concert, you know, in the middle of July. Well, that's a possibility, you know, but the way that they took that into consideration in terms of trying to reduce the temperatures to around 80 degrees. Uh, or so, which is which is pretty pretty reasonable for for to see a concert, especially when you're covered. Well, you know, something I might add also: the twelve thousand five hundred is the max. It, yes. Not every concert is going to be max. 
they said that I think we got three levels, 45, 4,000, 7,500, and 12,500, something like that. Yes. So Subcons is actually a lot less traffic. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they would love to see every concert oh, yeah. at, uh, at 70%, okay? And they factored in, this is pretty cool, they factored in ride share, okay? Tulsa's not a huge ride share city like some of the other cities we may go to. However, that's going to change. And they're anticipating that every event, regardless of uh, the capacity that comes, is that about 30% of those folks who come are going to come by way of ride share. So they're actually going to have a really nice uh, ride share lane for people to be dropped off and to be able to pick up to move those people. And so you still have to have enough parking to accommodate 12,500 12, minus 30%. So that's why we have to build about 3,500 parking spaces. And then we're going to add to about 1,000 to NSU because a lot of people already during Scott Fest will walk from NSU over to over to Scott Fest. And so it's not that far. It's you know basically a little about half a mile or so, which is not too far to walk for a concert. And so actually that saved us a thousand dollars at uh, you know eight ten thousand dollars space. And that was a tremendous savings. First concert should be happening probably the late summer of 2025. All right. So one of the one of the issues that not issues one of the um, questions that has come up is there's an overlay and this is usually y'all may not even know that it was there it's called an overlay district it's a um, uh, for developers so in order to develop we tried to open that up so that it, it could create more uh, very creative new ways of developing uh, it would allow for multi uh, multi-family uh, multi-purpose um, developments like a maybe a, a uh, 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 you know, like the Brio so maybe a little bit of a retail on the bottom with some with some apartments on top those types of, of developments well we found that it was a little bit little bit cumbersome for the developers the developers uh, gave us feedback and said we can't do this because these two or three things and so we are re-engaging just like like city manager said we're re-engaging the uh, the um, uh, the committee to get back together and discuss that that overlay district so that it, it allows for more developments uh, easier developments maybe less cumbersome on on the developer itself to 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 bring stuff out there so as you've noticed there's not been a development since we opened up the intersection right there's nothing new no new buildings there's new new uh, businesses but not new buildings and that's what we really want. We want some more out parcels to be built out there. And so create more activity, more sales tax revenue, more opportunities for you to go shop or, or play or what, whatever you want to do.